All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is show you how to find, we're just going to work with the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, all right? After that, we'll show you what to do for the remaining part. So to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, we need to go back and look at our notes and remember our rules. OK, Rebecca? So I'm going to get to this here. First one is to find your vertical asymptotes. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the domain is all real numbers except when our denominator is equal to 0. This is pretty easy to see when is our denominator going to be 0. It's when x equals negative 1, right? However, for more complicated problems, let's go through the process of what we want to do. So what we, to find the vertical asymptotes, what you're going to do is you're going to take your denominator and you're going to set it equal to 0. All right. The reason why you want to set it equal to 0 is because you want to find the values of x that make your equation equal to 0. So this one we can do in our head. However, let's just practice it so we know that x equals negative 1. All right. So your vertical asymptote. Yep. Um, I'll show you. So your vertical asymptote is when x equals negative 1. That means your domain is going to be, I mean, we're not working with domain right now. We're not asking. But your domain is all real numbers except when x equals negative 1. And you know, we can write that as from negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1, comma, infinity. All right? That would be your domain, FYI. All right? That means all from negative infinity to infinity, which are all real numbers, except for our value negative 1. OK, so now let's find the horizontal. Ladies and gentlemen, the horizontal asymptotes all deal with your degrees of your two polynomials, right? We talked about rational functions. Remember I said you have a polynomial. The rational functions we're going to talk about today have a polynomial up top and a polynomial on the bottom. So for each polynomial, we have a degree, right? We have a degree of every polynomial. Even a constant polynomial has a degree of 0 because it's x to the 0. So every polynomial has a degree. So I need to determine what are the degrees of my polynomial up top and my polynomial in the bottom. Well, to first do that, I want to make sure that my polynomial is written in descending order, correct? So let's rewrite this in descending order, right? Remember, you always have your highest degree first. So this should really be rewritten as 2x plus 5 over x plus 1. All right? Yes? So when you write it in descending order? Always. Always? Always want to write in, yeah. Always want to take your polynomial to write it in descending order. Because this is my degree, right? You could say that, right, that would be x to the 0. Because x to the 0, anything raised to the 0 is 1. 1 times 5 would just be 5. But we don't write it in there. So now I look at my two exponents. My two exponents are 1 and 1, right? So what we say, if you guys remember our formal definition, we had the exponents as n and m in the, in the notes. We represented the, the degree uh, for the top polynomial is n, and the degree for the bottom polynomial is um, n, or is m. So whenever your degrees are equal to each other, m, 1 equals 1, or, m, or n equals m, as we had in our notes, whenever they're equal to each other, the horizontal asymptote is equal to your leading coefficient divided by your other leading coefficient. So it's going to be 2 divided by 1, Okay, as 1 is going to be your leading coefficient for your denominator. So you take the leading coefficient of your numerator divided by your denominator, which is just equal to 2. Yes? That's it. That's all you guys got to do. So for horizontal, just determine whenever you have the same degree for top and bottom polynomials, you take their leading coefficients and you divide them. Yes? Exactly. That yep. Like Trying to make it really quick. <laughs> it gets 